We're gonna get a little, dare I say, existential about golf today. I know a lot of you say like, why don't you grind on your swing? What do I want out of golf? I like being on the golf course. I don't like being on the driving range. And that's like one of the first things I realize about myself and why I like playing golf. So for me, play is my practice. One thing I'm gonna try to evaluate throughout the day is when I make a score worse than par, like if we make a double bogey and it was just, you know what? I flubbed a wedge from 100 yards. That's different than I tried to go for it from 260 with water in front of the green. I think it's important to evaluate our misses this way. This hole pins out on the right. There's two towers there on the left. I think that's gonna be my target line and we'll have at it. So I missed it with a Healy cut up the right and we'll get up there and evaluate it. So we have 164 in, wind's coming from a bit this way, ball's actually quite a bit above my feet, so I'm aiming quite a bit right of the flag. Okay, so I hit it well. It kind of just hung up right. Oh, it's leaping a little left. Oh wow, it's getting really good, I'll have a putt. More on this later. The player in chief have been developing this for the better part of a year. Today's day one with it. Bermuda grass, which I'm not super used to. So I'm not gonna be too hard on myself for how I putt today, just gonna try to make sure I go through my routine. I make an equilateral triangle with the ball, the hole, and the low point. Higher slope here than here, so this ball's moving left. It's downhill. First putt of the day, I'm much more concerned about pace than I am about holing it. I see my line, it's about three cups right. Yeah, not bad. Very slow, that was downhill, and it didn't quite take as much break as I thought. But anytime you get your first putt of the day to tap in distance, we're just fine. Very interesting looking hole here. So we've got a wash all the way up the right. It's funny that I've gone from a case of the left to a case of the right. So I'm gonna take a really, really conservative target. That telephone pull up the left, trying to take obviously the big miss out of play. So that was hit pretty poorly, but it is on the target line. I'm trying to kind of overcorrect for a miss and do a bit of that. So I have 153 in, 157 slope, and I'm into about a half a club of breeze. So I'm hitting the six iron 165 club again. Looks like short left is probably hazard. There's a bit more short right. So I'm gonna aim a bit right of the pin. We'll see. So I definitely hit it right. So just looking back on this hole, this water plays all the way up the hole. Definitely a challenge. I mentioned I haven't played this course before. There's a saying, familiarity breeds contempt. On the golf course, familiarity breeds better scores. Here, I basically executed on the shot I wanted to hit, but in hindsight, now knowing the course better, that wasn't the best plan, because I am short-sided. It's a big upslope here, so I gotta get this ball just to the top of the ridge and then hope it trickles down. Yeah, not bad. So obviously, that carried to about here. If it would've carried to about here, I would've been about six feet instead I have 10 or 12. That's okay. I'm gonna go through the process again, stand on the low point of the triangle. So I've got it, cup and change outside the right camera left. Gonna commit to that line and not second guess it. Hmm, okay, I think I pulled that a little bit and it certainly broke more. So I, I'm gonna start paying a bit more attention to the grain here. That's gonna be a challenge for me, I'm not used to it. Anyhow, stroke hole three, nothing wrong with a bogey. So here we have 5.11 par five. Haven't really found it with the driver yet and that's important here because now there's some nasty misses everywhere. There's sort of a barren spot up there on the right that I don't think I can reach with driver. So that's gonna be my target line. Okay, that was struck well, a little right of my target. Now often here I wouldn't be hitting three wood, but there's tons of room left. So I'm just gonna bunt a three wood up there and hope to have a nice little pitch in. Ball's a bit above my feet. Just wanna put decent contact on it. In my line, there's a trap just left of the pin. This club tends to draw, especially with the ball above my feet. So that's my intended start line. If it draws a bit fine, even if it were to fade somehow, there's tons of room there too. Yeah, that's fine. It started on that line and then it actually did fade a bit. Looks pretty open up there. Lack of course knowledge there proved to be a bit penal. I thought this was all open over here. So we were discussing when you make scores, evaluate poor plan, poor execution. I executed more or less on what I was trying to do, but lack of course knowledge meant that that was actually a bad plan. In hindsight, I do that and aim at Ridley left, or I just hit a six or seven iron to be short of the traps and then I'd still have a flip wedge in. So now I have a tough shot, about 90 yards out of a bunker. I'm gonna try to catch it clean and anything short here looks bad. I can't quite see what's long, but I'm gonna try to err on the side of missing long. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, this looks like it's really moving this way. I'm gonna try to study the grain. If people in the comments can give me tips, I'd love to hear them. I don't really know. <laughs> Looks like I'm down grain. They do appear to be going this way. So I think this one will be speedy, moving quite a bit to the right. This is a putt 20, 25 feet. 
not thinking about holing it. I obviously want to hole it, but I'm much more concerned here about putting the right pace on it so that if I miss, I don't have another, you know, six feet or more coming back. So I'm committing to a line, which in my case right now is three and a half cups to my left of the hole. But then the thought is really just pace, 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 and let's go. Yeah, not bad. They're slower than they appear, I think. Missed them all short so far, I believe. Happy with the five after being in that fairway bunker there. And let's go. We are at the highest point of elevation on the golf course, and I'm playing into probably a one or two club wind here. Pin is right here. Let's talk about taking advantage of the rules. You're allowed two clubs back from the tee markers, and these bushes are actually like right there. So I'm gonna take a couple steps back. I'm between a five iron, which is a 180 club, 175, 180, and a six iron, which is a 165 club. I'm a little more comfortable, just to be honest, with the six iron, and it doesn't look like the miss short is super penal, but I'm hoping it'll get there. Wow, that went right through the wind. So it's pin high. It actually missed a little left. I'll either be chipping or putting there. This is actually a little bit past the hole, which is fine. I'm a big believer in getting the ball rolling as quickly as possible. I'm not gonna kill myself thinking about the line. They have been running a little slow, so I'll put a bit more in this one. Ooh, that was way too much. You gotta pay attention when you watch your ball go past the hole, what it was doing. So I saw it was breaking as I thought. This one will break a little less coming back up the hill. So put a nice firm stroke on this one, just about a cup outside. Huh. That's a bonus, that's a probably 30% make percentage. Very happy. So I am targeting a score today. I like having scoring goals as motivation, and rather than scoring goals making me take stupid shots, I feel like they're more inclined to make me take smart shots. Here's my last 20 scores. Firstly, you'll probably notice that right now I'm an 8.1 handicap. These scores look quite a bit worse than an 8.1 handicap. I've definitely been up and down trying some new things. So you'll see today for my cap to drop, I can be like quite a bit over par. So you can be an eight handicap and like shoot 84 and have it lower your cap sometimes. Crazy as it is. This one's difficult though. Really long hole, 430, but downhill downwind. And the fairway runs out into a hazard. It looks like somewhere around 300. I do worry that if I absolutely, you know, hit a cracker, hit like my 260 shot in Vancouver, 250, 260, it could go through. I still think the driver will come short of it. The thing I have to convince myself here is not to try to steer it, not to try to bunt it, just to hit the shot and accept it. I'm looking a bit right of the 150 stick, which is kind of the right edge of where you can see hazard up there. And again, just tempo, smooth swing, don't steer it, hit a golf shot. Pretty good. You'll notice the smaller targets you pick, you can miss them. Like that missed my target line by 30 yards, but because it was a conservative target, that's definitely still, you know, online with where there's golf course as opposed to waste area. We'll get up there and see if it's good. So that ball went a long way. If I had absolutely tagged driver, it might have found that. So playing this again, I might hit three wood. Decisions now, I have 146 in. My eight iron's a 140 club. It's downwind, but uphill. I'm kind of trying to evaluate where I'd rather miss here. Long looks like I have kind of a nasty downhiller. Short left looks okay. So I'm gonna play an eight iron, a 140 club. I'm basically aiming at the pin. And if it misses, I think it's likely to miss online or a little short left, which is okay. Let's go. Yeah, missed just a hair short, landed there and stopped. The seven iron was the other option, the 155 club, but I was fearing 155 downwind, long looked bad. So definitely happy with the miss here. Long would have been bad, like I said. And I should have wanted to jinx it, but this should be like a six or seven out of 10 up and down. It's uphill, I'll get the yardage, but not that I would usually do that. This is a feel shot, but just for the video so you can kind of get an idea. Yeah, 15 yards, so the eight iron went its normal distance. So this shot is almost a putt, right? I'm just taking a gap wedge, reading it like a putt, I'm seeing that this is higher than this, almost just putting it with the gap wedge. And like the goal here would be inside three feet. Just picturing the first spot it lands, which will be just on the green, and then hoping it rolls out towards it. Yeah, I went to more like five or six feet, maybe a bit closer to seven or eight feet. Yeah, not my best there, it did roll out on me. That's okay. Of course I had to jinx it by saying six or seven out of 10 up and down. Not a ton in this, downhill, moving a hair this way, so what I'm deciding is whether to give up the hole or not, by which I mean, does the start line of this putt need to be outside of the hole? It's about an inch out. So this is gonna be one where I'm gonna commit to hitting the ball here. I'll evaluate whether I hit that line and evaluate whether it was a good read. Hit my line. Oh, and I didn't get it to the hole. Okay, it was a good read, just not enough pace on it. Okay, definitely a good time to talk about managing expectations. 200 to this flag, it's playing 205 and it's into wind. It's probably playing like 215, 
220. So the first thing I'm trying to decide is a club. My hybrid's only about 200. It does fly low, so not as affected by the wind as my irons, but that pin's all the way in the back, and there's a ton of green short of it. My three wood's 230. Definitely wider dispersion left and right with my three wood. So I'm okay hitting the 200 club here. Hope it will go 190, 200, catch a piece. I'm aiming at sort of right where their carts are now. I'm happy here if the outcome is a 40 or 50 foot putt. This is a hole we're gonna make some bogeys on. Let's try to limit the damage to that. Still be committed over every shot, but just recognize on the tee, that's just tough. This is tough for a scratch golf or 200 into wind to a tuck pin. So I wanna not be tense over the ball thinking, oh, I gotta put it up there and just take a smooth swing with it. So that's what I'm gonna try to do. Okay, worst shot of the day. I'm not quite sure. I think that was just Healy cut and didn't get through it, but no reason to turn this into a bigger score. Get it on the green. One or two putts, get out of here. So I have 60 yards, and this is actually a tricky one. Downhill lie. The ball's gonna wanna go left, so all I'm trying to do here is pick a spot right of the pin and short to hope to land it on. Ooh, it kinda got stuck on the front of the green. I was talking about how like doubles are gonna happen throughout the day. So really poor execution on the tee, pretty poor execution on this one. Doubles are gonna happen. We're gonna try to avoid one here with a good putt. One good putt, make a four and get out of here. Very challenging putt. It comes down a steep ridge and then continues rolling vaguely downhill. There's a big, big slope this way. So I'm kind of trying to picture an apex point here. Want the ball apexing somewhere in here, a little left of that. You know what, not bad. They're definitely slower than I'm giving them credit for. I wanted this to be inside three feet. We've got a seven footer for bogey, but that's okay. You know, we talked on the tee about bogey's a good score on this hole today. And we have a look at it, despite not being the one we wanted. These greens aren't super true right now, so I'll hit this one nice and firm, center right. Okay. It's 390, 200 to clear the bunker on the left side. 210 on the right side. I have both of those. Three wood can carry 210 if I hit it well, but yeah, I don't think it's the club here because my options are three wood brings the trap into play more than the driver. If I go left and short of the traps, then I have like 200 in. If I can aim over the left side of the trap here, I don't need to hit an all-timer to carry it. Should be able to carry it, no trouble. So there's two palm trees directly over the left side of the trap. I'm looking at the top of the left palm tree and smooth swing. So yeah, that ended up being a push draw that was a bit right of my target, but it easily carried the right side of the trap. Hopefully that got a good bound down there. We might have a short number in, we'll see. The back of the trap that it carried is here, and I guess it got some really good luck. There's a big slope here. We got all the way down to here. So just 61 in. So this is a shot I think a lot of us put a lot of pressure on ourselves on. Oh my God, I only have 60 in. But you know what? If this was a 60 yard pitch and putt hole with an uneven line, a tricky green, like three's not a bad score. So I'm not gonna kill myself here. Just wanna make sure I put a good strike on it on this lie. It's gonna wanna go right. So I'm gonna aim a little left to the pin. I think that'll be pretty tight. Yeah, I guess this one looked good from far, but was far from good. Like I said, it's not worth killing yourself. Some 60 yard pitches you get tight, some you don't. So this one's downhill, pretty big slope coming this way. Like I said, greens here are still kind of under repair, but that's okay. I have to putt right over a little scar that's sanded in the green. So we're gonna focus on pace here, because from here on, it's pretty steeply downhill. Come on, ball. <laughs> It did go right over this thing I was aiming at. Okay, we've got a behemoth of a par five here, 570. It looks like past this water on the right, because that looks like the only part of this hole that I'm sure is safe. Oh wow, that dove out of the sky and landed in waste area and I think it stayed there. Could be a four shotter now. <laughs> this was very unfortunate. I'm gonna put a gap wedge on this. With how I'm gonna hit this, it's probably only gonna go 80 or 90 yards, but that's okay. Let's just keep it left, because everything right is water. <laughs> so I have 286, I'm never getting there. So all I'm trying to do is set up the next shot here, right? I do have a three wooden hand, but that's only because I drove up there, there's been a lot of waiting. I'm a single now on the heels of a threesome. There's a ton of room short right. If there wasn't here, this is iron wedge. You know, get it up there 200, 230, wedge in, have a look at par, but at this point, obviously playing for bogey. 
Okay, the bad shots are compounding on this hole. I have 99 in. Downwind, obviously, you'd think the ball would go farther, but sometimes it has an effect of knocking the ball down. So I'm gonna basically hit this full, my 9,500 yard gap wedge. Pin's right in the middle, so we're gonna aim right at the pin. That landed pretty good. I'm hoping that's inside 10 feet. We actually have a putt for par here, so we'll take that. Well, one good shot on a par five definitely mitigates damage. Three and a half feet for par. Boy, I would like it. It's actually a little tricky though, hard to tell on camera, but it's on a bit of a side slope. Take your time on this instead of taking three practice swings on the tee. I can visually see the left side of the hole is higher than the right side, so I'm definitely gonna be aiming center left. This is just about putting a good stroke on it, making sure I hit my line. <laughs> that's, that's stealing a par for sure. But one good wedge shot did the trick. Stroke hole one here, it's 430. And these bunkers on the right, you can see two of them are right at 250. So definitely in my driver range. Hard left, there's hazard. There's an American flag in the distance. That's my target line, just a hair right of that. There's a little palm tree short of it. That's my target line here. This is gonna be a real test of commitment to a line. It's a pretty scary line to look at, but I think it's the one I need. Uh-oh, hooked it into the hazard. Okay. So hazards here, ends there. Took a couple of club lengths. 227 in, definitely not the way we wanted to play this hole. And on the seventh hole, I ran into this threesome. They're definitely slowing down my game a bit. It's a good challenge. Got to stay in a groove despite lots of waiting between shots. Huge, huge green, but it's a lot wider than it is deep, it would appear. So 227 downwind, this should just be a smooth three wood. And the target's wide enough that if I can just get at the number, I should be putting. Now, obviously like green make percentage from 227 low, so Tempering expectations. Okay, I hit it really well. Yeah, it's gonna go right through the back of the green. It landed just on the front of the green and bound long over the back. Let's see what we got here. So this has to land short and then just kind of trundle on. Okay. Almost middle of the hole, center left. I pulled it a bit. Okay. Unfortunate to end the front on a disaster hole, but you know what? We hooked one into a hazard on stroke hole one. At that point, bogey became a good score. Hit a great approach. You know, just got a little unlucky. What can you do? Doubles happen. I spilled my Gatorade on myself, and it looks like I peed my pants. But pee in your pants is the coolest. So I just looked at the timestamp on my phone. It's been half an hour since the last driver swing, which is always a little scary. So I'm not gonna try to rip this one all out. Like I am hitting full driver, but swing thought here is just take a smooth golf swing. I'm aiming way up the right to be safe. Yeah, ooh, that needs to stop rolling. I think it's going to. Landed center right side of the fairway. Almost caught the water. Okay, so we have 131 in. My nine iron carries 125. My eight iron carries 135, 140. It's 121 to carry the water. I was thinking about hitting the eight iron to be safe, but you know what? This is one like whatever shot I take, I just need to be committed. And I think aiming a little right of the flag where it's only a 120 carry, the nine iron's fine. And the key is just take a golf shot, right? Let's not overthink the water. Hmm. So I overthought the water and was very tentative. Yeah, that was really bad. Okay, didn't do what I said. Do as I say, not as I do. We're immediately gonna put the bad shot behind us, short-sided to a pin. So I'm just gonna bump it along with my gap wedge. I'd be very happy with anything inside 10 feet. Yeah, I'd say that's about 10 feet. Happy with that. Slope here, I'll stand at the low point of my triangle. I waited so long, the uh, shorts dried off. Side hill, it's sweeping quite a bit left. About a cup, let's get committed to that line. Commit, commit, commit. So I underread it a hair. I think I started it about here. It needed to be a little more outside. Like I've gone three over through the last two. This is a tough hole. So it's like, this could be a tough stretch. Over the course of 18, regardless of what your handicap level is, you're gonna have stretches that are, you're playing better than sort of expected score, stretches where you're playing worse. Because often my best nine holes as a single digit will be like even par, one under, something like that. And the worst nine could be 10, 12 over. It's a good mental exercise, I think, to keep your mind in it. I'm not gonna let myself get too phased, whatever happens through that stretch in here. You know, stroke hole one, then tough water hole, stroke hole two. Not always gonna come through these holes unscathed. It's just a matter of like fully resetting before every shot. Like this drive right now doesn't care 
what I did on the last hole. So their cart there is my target. It's a long hole, but I'm not gonna try to change my swing here. It's just hit it out there with driver, see how we do. We found what easily appears to be the worst bunker on this hole. Like I didn't really register it when I was teeing off, but I hit a kind of a weak high fade that probably went 230, 240. And I'm almost definitely gonna be wedging out of that bunker. It's gonna be lob wedge out. I literally have to hit a splash bunker shot to get it over this lip. Yeah, we're out. I have 173 playing 181 with the slope. The ball's quite a bit below my feet. So I have to look at the left corner of the green. There's like a mound in the left trap. So I'm looking just right of that. This is gonna come out low and cutty. I'm just gonna try to hit the smooth five iron and understand this is a tough golf shot. So it faded, landed short, took a big bound. Oh, and then it went down another mound to the right of the green. So I'm gonna have a blind pitch from the right, but it's gonna have to land high. Yeah, I just kind of died there. I mentioned that big scores, some of them are unavoidable. So what happened there? Poor execution on the tee. From there on out, I would say I kind of played as expected. So sometimes they just creep up on us. Still go through my routine here. I see a lot of people at this point, they're like, the hole's over. I still have a chance of getting away from this stroke hole two with a bogey. Like that's my expected score on this hole, right? Treat this like it's an important putt because it is. Make percentage might be low, but that's okay. It's a little bit downhill, just outside the hole to my right. Oh, I had it in the jaws. These things happen. Okay, 133. My nine iron carries 125 and the pin's right at the back, so that's the stick. Looks good. Oh, it's really good. It's a real downhill slider here. Low point of the triangle. The hill gets steeper on this side of the hole. It's still gonna move to my right for sure. Kind of visualizing when you play the Tiger Woods video game or Mario Golf, you see the, the line to the hole. And for capture speed, I like to envision that line ending about 12 inches past the hole. That's where I'd want the ball to stop if it didn't go in. I haven't done a great job of that today. I've left a lot short. It's about two and a half cups. Hmm, it didn't really move. I also kind of failed on weight there because it didn't get past the hole. Okay, get out of here. Pretty express, not a scratch golfer. How's that for a nice, great ball mark? Courtesy, golf sidekick. Planting feathers, growing birdies, golf sidekick. So another long period of time between driver swings. I really don't know where to go on this hole. It's only 350. I can actually see where the flag is. I think it's a dog leg left. There are bunkers left and right. My rangefinder couldn't quite get the number, but based on the 150, they appear to be at about 230. So I think it's important to hit this one straight. Aim down the middle. Ooh, I hooked it. I think short of the left trap. It's, it's really tough, right? A lot of us can get into a groove with driver at the range. That doesn't really simulate golf, right? It's been at least 30 minutes since hitting a drive. I'm like, you're gonna hit some bad ones. Okay, they're in play. Okay, I did find the bunker. So I have 100, which is a full gap wedge. My pitching wedge carries about 115 and it's exactly 100. Short looks really bad, so I'm leaning towards taking the 120 club, the pitching wedge. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Very important to catch this clean. I actually have a good lie at least. Pin is right over this little dirt mound. Choke down on it here, keep my chin up. We'll see when we get up there. That's either, it was definitely on the right line. It might be a little bit short. It wasn't as clean as it could be. Well, that might go in. Ooh, good shot, Adam. It's a gimme if you ask me. <laughs> Spectator says it's a gimme. I make no promises about playing well in front of you, but we'll see. Yeah, that's good. So 198, finally a gettable par five. Smooth hybrid. Somewhere up there. Okay, let's visualize this one. Lots of green to work with. Ooh, it kind of bit on me. Not my best. I'm gonna wait for a read here. This looks good. How about in? Great roll. All right, I got no excuse to miss. Oh, I left it way short, way short. How much longer are we gonna make Mike wait for this eagle putt? Get in the hole. Nice oh, eagle hole. Oh, Something like that. Oh. oh. <laughs> okay, so just left of the green with a driver and see what happens, I guess. We'll see. 
Mm, that's not gonna be good. Oh, so bad it's good maybe? Stay there, right before the trap, we'll take that. 46. Thanks. I've had trouble reading these greens today. Under read them, over read them. Well, that was terrible. <laughs> Never even had a chance. Okay, joined the boys on the last few holes. Made this game much more exciting. So 333 here, thinking three wood. Never saw it land. Okay, just 90 in. It's a three quarter gap wedge. Oh, a little short. All right, I'm gonna watch Mike's chip here. Oh, I like that. Oh, it's good, good number though. Okay, quite a bit uphill, moving a bit left. Boy, you gotta hammer them. All right, let's go four for four here. Oh man, it bounced. Okay, we're 0 for three. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, one for four, one for four. <laughs> All righty, 124, nine iron carries 125 and it's a bit into, I think nine iron's perfect. Be good. Oh yeah, hopefully, it's tight. Okay, Adam, nothing stupid here. This is a par five, okay. Smells like a birdie hole. <laughs> okay, we have 197 into about a one club, which based on the way the three hybrid has been going today, feels like a perfect three hybrid. Oh, I faded it. 70 yards right of the green. Okay, that last one was pretty bad. So 40 yards, just need to get it up there, a little right of the hole. All right, pretty good looking birdie to end the day. It's either for 78 or 79, I'm not good, sure. Good Ooh. Good bite left, bite left, no bite? Are we doing it wrong? 